Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got some more exciting announcements out of the Business Application Summit, and we've got some really cool community posts as well. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Mark Lillevelt's got a blog post looking at one of the cool new features in Power BI Desktop, and this is the personalization view of visuals in the report. Now, this is really a consumption related experience, and it's really targeted towards folks that are viewing your reports, not from an authoring perspective. As an author, you can control what's actually happening and whether or not they have this capability. But once it's enabled, when folks go to use that report, they can actually change up the visual. So if you've got a bar chart, they can change it to a different visual type and they can add or remove other measures and whatnot to maybe have just a different look at what's going on, maybe something specific to them. And then they can save that as a personal bookmark. It does not affect the actual report in its entirety for everyone else, which is very cool. Mark does a great job in his blog post, really highlighting how you enable this, things to consider when you're using it, and then just, you know, some other items to be aware of with the result of this feature. Overall, I think it's a big win for consumers of the report. Another thing to keep in mind, this is a preview feature, so you will have to enable the preview feature from the settings perspective if you want to take advantage of it. John White's got a blog post looking at another new item in Power BI Desktop, and this is the relative time slicer. We had the relative date slicer, but now we've got a relative time slicer as well. And beyond that, what John highlights in this blog post, which I think is really cool, is just understanding that both the relative date and time slicer are keyed off of UTC time. And so if you want to take advantage of local time or a specific time zone, he walks through how you can do that to offset the UTC to get the experience that you're really looking for. It's not super complicated, but it's definitely things that you should consider when going down this road. Also, if you're working with time in general, just be aware that, you know, time can be kind of a pain to deal with from a Power BI report perspective. And there are considerations to make in separating the dates from the times, just from your dimension tables and making sure that you're not over bloating or have too much granularity in one given table. So just be aware of that as well. Links as always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Arun Ulog's got a blog post on the Power BI blog, really recapping all of the Power BI announcements that happened at the Business Application Summit. And so if you didn't have a chance to actually view any of the recorded material from the Business Application Summit, this blog has definitely got you covered. Or like I said, all of those are recorded, so you could go back and watch those as well. And he's got the main video from Arun, from himself and Amir embedded in this blog post as well. So you can just watch it right from the blog. There were a ton of amazing updates that are gonna be coming out over the next six months. Very excited for the direction that we're going. And the other cool thing that I love that Arun kind of calls out is just this concept of a data culture and just understanding that it's about people and the problems they face. And Power BI is really just a tool to enable that within your organization. So again, if you're looking for something to just catch you up on all the cool updates, this blog is the blog to go read. Links down below. Another announcement that came out of the Business Application Summit, this one's geared towards Power BI Premium, is this idea of a timely overload email from a Power BI Premium capacity perspective. And so, this is really tuned for about 10 minutes after an overload occurrence. You will get an email for that Power BI premium capacity, and it'll also show you like the data sets that were running and give you more information about what the overload actually was so that you can go and further investigate it. I love this because it gives you more of that proactive approach as opposed to a reactive approach, and it just really will help administers administrators of the capacity. This email is tied to the service outage notification tenant settings. So in the Power BI admin portal under tenant settings, make sure that you have specific people in that, that you want to receive this email. We got the April, 2020 Power BI desktop release. It landed at business application summit. It was a little bit delayed as Will Thompson had in a previous blog post, but it is finally here. And whew, there are some great items in there. We already talked about two of them, the relative time slicer and the personalization views that are available for consumers, which is very, very cool. A 
but there were some other cool things in here as well. One of the big things that I personally really enjoyed is that the conditional formatting, the ability to go figure out of where conditional formatting is, has been improved. And I can tell you just from playing with that a little bit, it is way better than the way it was before. And now it's very easy to figure out like, hey, conditional formatting can be applied and this is what I want to apply. Another cool item that landed as well is this ability to just kind of drag across multiple visuals from a selection perspective. It's referred to as the lasso select in here. It's not a lasso select inside of a visual, but it's just grabbing multiple visuals so that you can then move them or group them instead of having to do like control click on everything. Click, click, click. Another interesting item is change detection for page refresh. That is an interesting item and it'll be fun to see how folks can take advantage of that with regards to from a direct query report and figuring out when items change to then trigger that refresh as opposed to just polling every few seconds. Q&A got some updates and then also some other AI visuals got some updates to support direct query. So key influencers and the decom tree. That's very cool. There were other updates as well. So make sure you've updated to the latest version of Power BI Desktop and also check out this blog post for all of the details and all the items that were in this release. There were some preview features, so make sure you've turned those on if you want to take advantage of them. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.